some movement which is happening on the tree over there to the left. So it's the ears are up. Hey, it's, it's running. The tiger is running. I have recently started visiting Panna Tiger Reserve and I am already in love with this particular place. Last year, so beginning of 2022 or 2021 December 31st, I was here at Panna Tiger Reserve to spend my New Year's Eve with my family and one of the best sightings I had was on January 1st. That was my first visit to the park and like I saw this couple of like tigers walking head on early in the morning and not only that, one of the other favorite tigers of this place the kanaya so which is blind in one of the eyes so we had an amazing sighting of that and of course the heart of panna tiger reserve which is the ken river so i mean one of my dream shots obviously is to see a tiger crossing the landscape in the ken river and that is one of the dream shots and that is where panna for me has become a very very special place and i'm going to be back here very frequently wildlife photography one of the very important aspects is obviously the stay location now what I generally tend to do is try to do a little bit of research and choose the best location for my stay and of course even for my clients as well who travel along with me now some of the very basic requirements is obviously good food good accommodation amazing hospitality with good service and not only that key things especially for wildlife photography the kind of rooms we have and access from the room to the reception area for the safaris so a lot of these basic things I make sure like it falls into place for me now that is where as a part of this particular journey in Panna Tiger Reserve I am staying here at this beautiful property of Nahar Bagh let me just take you around the property and also show you the various things what they have which made me choose this as the destination of stay here at Panna Tiger Reserve. So come, let's explore this place. Now as a part of this entire experience of traveling with me into the wild, so I'll bring across all the various things what Sudhir does as a part of his wildlife photography. So let's not wait any longer, 
jump across, join me and let me help you explore Panna Tiger Reserve the way Sudhir sees through his eyes. Now here we have a beautiful situation in this backdrop. We have a couple of wild boars over here feeding. Backdrop we have spotted deer, samba deer. And uh, now in these kind of situations, let me show you how I photograph this situation. Now one of the key things what I do is try to always get a eye level photography or even a little bit below eye level. Now, one of the key reasons why we remove the center seat in the gypsy is so that we can sit here like this and then we go completely low. Now, we have uh, the wild boar here just feeding. I want to get a low angle photography. Now, in this situation, generally what I do is the lens color of the lens, I take it up and I'm using a Sony 402.8. So, it's the world's lightest 402.8. So, what I do is the display at the back I just basically pull it up there you go and then the lens collar is on top so I hold it like this on the in the left hand and the other thing is like now for focus focus tracking and for composition so I do not shoot like this I don't go down like this so this is where I use the thumb so from the top basically like I hold it here and if you see here it gives a nice position for me to hold it press it and then even to control the composition so this kind of a position of holding and focusing from the top it really helps now with the wild boat there so I go down so of course you need to be comfortable to go down let me position myself properly okay and now the wild boat is going I go low like this so I hold my camera focus from the top and I start focusing and shooting on the wild boar. Now because of this low angle what I'm shooting, so as you can see, I'm getting some absolutely beautiful composition. So, and also from a composition point of view here, if you see, I'm placing the subjects to the lower one third portion of the frame, showing more of the space on top and going low. This is beautiful. The foreground out of focus because of the angle. Oh, this is nice. Okay. No, this is coming. This, oh, look at this. This is so beautiful. So, of course, the good part in this is the eye tracking is on. Ah. So, the eye tracking is on and the camera takes care of tracking the subject so I need to take care of good composition and also the other thing is from a camera settings point of view if you look at the backdrop so this is more of a very flat tonality not very overexposed or not underexposed so since the tonality hold on In fact, this is one of the largest wild boars I have ever seen. That guy is quite huge. Now, coming back to the camera setting, as I was explaining, since the overall tonality is a little flat, so I have kept the cameras metering in multi-segment in Sony, which is matrix metering in Nikon and evaluative metering in Canon, with an exposure compensation of zero. So, that's my current camera setting. 
white balance for this beautiful early morning lighting around 6000 6500 kelvin of white balance will give you really nice warm early morning warm colors it gives you and with this all these basic settings make sure you get your exposure triangle parameter correct since you're doing handheld photography anything above 1 by 400 1 by 500 shutter speed is a very good shutter speed for this eye level hand holding technique for this so this is how you need to arrive at the various camera settings work on the shooting technique composition and then execute your shot so let me get back to continuing my shooting of course because of creating this video i'm like turning back talking to the camera here but uh, in reality you need to stay focused on your job because like any small movement certain angle those are your shots so stay focused let me get back to my shooting and any other subjects, beautiful subjects, if I get, I'll get back to you with more tips. So still here waiting for the tigress with four cups to show herself. And uh, this is the habitat what you see behind me. So she's somewhere in this particular area, so just waiting and hope we get a glimpse of her and the cups. So it's been almost... Uh, Three days, I believe, since she has come out. And, uh, yep, Panna, absolutely amazing place. I think uh, one of the most beautiful parks in India, as I said. So, definitely, you must plan a visit over here. As an expert in this field, I am here with my time-tested tips and tricks to help you make breathtaking images. I often get this particular question as to Sudhir, how do you get those head-on shots of the tiger at such low eye level? Do you get on from the vehicle? So that's even a common question I get. Let me introduce you to my vehicle setup. So this is what I do. I get the center seat of the gypsy removed. So this becomes my working area and in a disciplined way, I lay out my equipment. Currently, I have my Sony 200-600, the 402.8 and of course, if I'm carrying the 600mm, that also goes there. And I also have my brand new Leo Photo tripod, carbon fiber, very useful. I'll talk about it later. And uh, the other important thing, binoculars, never forget that. And most importantly, even my bean bag. So the bean bag is always inside. So I organize my equipment here in the front and this becomes my working area. So once I have this kind of an open space, let me jump into the vehicle now and then help you understand how exactly I use this space for my photography. Let's do that. Once I'm inside the vehicle, first and foremost, very important, the shoes or whatever slippers if I'm wearing, I generally get rid of it. So then I take it out. That goes in and now with barefoot, it becomes extremely comfortable for you to sit and work. So then, this is how I travel in the gypsy. So face forward like this, sitting here, everything spread across in front of you. And a lot of times what I generally do is I 
open up my tripod make sure everything is all the legs are tight and then I unlock all these things okay and this goes flat and then here if you see oh it's the wrong one so this has to come down actually and only one has to be out so the one which is completely flat it goes there and then this comes out a little there you go that's set up then this also comes out a little now this is the perfect angle for me so the way i do it is like i have my tripod i have my fluid head loosen the fluid head Turn it around. Oops. Okay. There you go. Alarm call? No. no. Okay. So then this goes in. Tighten. Open it up. And of course the center of gravity little bit. Make adjustments. Superb. Now this becomes my setup. So this goes all the way and now once I start shooting, things will start moving around. So this goes completely close and then this becomes my shooting angle. So here if you see with this kind of a setup, it becomes very easy. Now the bean bag, get it out of the way, it comes in. So with this setup here, hand on the lens mount and then go low, you do your photography. So this way. You can move around so whatever angle you want to shoot you can shoot of course this is not for the head on so this is for the side corner for shooting what i use and then again suddenly like you want to do handle shooting no problem lock it quick release, quick release. okay okay quick release take it out handle you start shooting so this is the basic setup what i do tripod the other important part of your wildlife photography so currently like i'm using my brand new leo photo tripod uh, it's a carbon fiber tripod the exact model is the ranger ls 365c so this is the one carbon fiber tripod which has four sections so generally i prefer this four sections because the overall height of the tripod if you see is very very compact and this one will easily go into my luggage when i do the packing i check in the tripod into my luggage carbon fiber extremely lightweight so it doesn't add to your overall luggage weight and also uh, with the kind of locking mechanism what it has so this is very easily you can operate it and just the lock unlock rotate remove lock rotate remove lock so this way if you see it's very fast to extend the legs with this kind of a locking mechanism instead of the clip one which comes which is not so great according to me and then suddenly like you want to shorten it so you can be very fast then you can it's so compact easily you can put any kind of ball head so my preference is always a fluid head so depending on the usage and the costing so you can use a ball head a gimbal head a fluid head so any of this pan and tilt head so any of the heads you can use it and uh, this is my go-to tripod when it comes to my wildlife photography of course as i said along with the fluid head and very easy to carry lightweight so definitely a tripod i would highly recommend for you to use the next very important thing is the eye level shooting especially when the tiger is walking head on how do i shoot it so the driver he keeps driving like this tiger coming from the back so this if you see this particular platform this platform is extremely useful so generally this goes here like this take the support just lift it a little so especially like if it is a heavy lens what you are using and you can't do handled photography that is where this comes extremely helpful so this platform most of the gypsies they have it so then the tiger coming at the back so you go low so this is how you get those eye level shots of course a little low angle if i want sometimes what i do i flip the screen out like this and then keep it low here like this again parallel and this is where i use my thumb so holding it like this the lens color being up so hold it like this and then i have my screen here for the display i look at the tiger and then i can watch it here and then so this is the way of course when this is happening we are not driving away we are stationed i take my shots the tiger is very far because this is a 400 2.8 lens 
So tiger being far, I use this kind of a technique, go low and for composition easily I can take it up or down. That's the reason I hold it like this with the thumb for the autofocusing. Do like this and then click, 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 I get my shots. So this is the low angle technique what I use for tiger head on photography or any subjects out there, low level if I have to shoot, this is the technique. And as I said, this is the main advantage of getting rid of the center seat spread around the things here all the equipment and uh, get your eye level shots and you can always just relax and sometimes like uh, in the afternoons when you're there full day safaris so we have all the beddings here then i have my pillow which is my bean bag put it across and just relax sleep when nothing is happening and that is how i even catch up with some of my sleep and i'm very well known for that actually so that's pretty much it about the setup, my vehicle, my shooting technique, head-on techniques, low angle shooting, all these things. That's it. There is a tiger sitting right on the road with all the vehicles in front of us. So in these situations, the thing what you have to do is pick one opening where you are able to see the tiger, like what we have done here. Because if we go further, we will not be able to see the tiger because of the trees coverage. So in this situation, so what we have to do is get one small opening, lot of distractions, but that is where the long tele lens comes extremely handy. So what I'm now doing is from a composition point of view, keeping the tiger completely to the lower portion of the frame. And then I have one opening with the whole forest around. And that is a beautiful opening what I have. And, uh -huh. So let's underexpose it a little. Wow, so these are what we call as the long shots. So use a long tele lens, but from far, get the angle right. And since the tiger is cooperative, I took a lot of horizontal shots. Let me try some vertical shots and the composition always place the subject completely to the lower portion of the frame. This is such a beautiful shot, I tell you. Wow! This is a crazy shot. This is beautiful. So, one small opening because the tiger is sitting in the bright light and this dark shadow area in the foreground, that is where I've done a minus two exposure compensation. And the whole thing here being dark and just the tiger is lit up. Of course, since there are so many distractions from an autofocus point of view, you need to use a single autofocusing point. In my case, since I'm using the tracking, so the camera takes care of the tracking part. Keeping the autofocus point on the tiger, then the rest of the things the camera takes care of because of the tracking. But if you're using a DSLR, you'll have to move the focusing point, lower portion, single autofocusing point, you will get the shot. So the tiger is just sitting now in fact, now if you see, the tiger has just got up and it's staring to its right. Now, from what we understand here, it seems like there's a leopard on the left side. And prior to this, like uh, the leopard was down, the tiger came in, the leopard, it climbed up the tree. And that is why now the tiger is just sitting there, it was sleeping all this time. But now the tiger has, hold on. So the tiger has got up and is staring to the right. Probably there's some movement of the leopard. From here we are not able to see the leopard which is up on the tree. Uh, but oh, the tiger is running. Come, come, come fast. Let's go, let's go. So, after 
all that crazy excitement about the tiger and the leopard, that whole action what we witnessed. So we further come down and now here we get a leopard with a spotted deer kill. So it seems like in the morning the leopard made a kill and it's sitting over there. Uh, it's a little far behind the bushes, not a great scene uh, for photography. But uh, again, an amazing natural history movement. I mean, like uh, the last four safaris were totally dry, nothing happened. And now today morning in a single safari, we witnessed amazing morning landscape with uh, the wild boar, spotted deers, backlit, langur playing around. And then we came across the whole tiger and the leopard thing. And now here again, leopard with the spotted deer kill. These are the things what can happen in wildlife, wildlife photography where everything will be calm, nothing happening and then one fine safari, you get bonus after bonus after bonus sighting and even you're able to capture that. So I'll just continue to wait here, hoping some action happens where the leopard will come to feed on the kill and uh, yeah, from a photography it's not a great one but hopefully like we'll get some video snippet of that. Yeah, the leopard which was sleeping, it just lifted its head up and again went back to sleep. Okay, yeah, I think the leopard is getting up. It may come on the kill to feed now. So, let's try to get some photographs. Yeah. Wow, now that was an amazing experience what I had here at Panna Tiger Reserve. So, hope you enjoyed this particular travel log of mine and do subscribe to my channel and stay tuned to it so that I can get you more of these kind of updates along with hopefully product reviews, a lot more photography related tips and anything you want to know on photography. So as I said, like I started visiting Panna very frequently and I'm already in love with this place and I'm going to plan my visit again very soon. Also, go ahead, plan your travel to Panna Tiger Reserve and make sure you stay at the Nahar Bagh for an amazing experience with respect to their hospitality, food, accommodation and everything. So I'll be back again with more of my updates. Till then, take care.